Hi, hello everyone. My name is uh, Prem Narayandas. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Ketonic. Uh, we at Ketonic have built a MLOps platform to help organizations accelerate uh, AI adoption. And uh, the fact that you know uh, you're probably spending time to listen to this video is because uh, you know all of us know that AI is important. Enterprises have accelerated uh, investments in AI. I personally have met uh, many CIOs, and all of them have said that uh, you know AI is important for them, and they've increased the budget. So while AI uh, is important, and you know uh, the CIOs and CXOs and organizations are accelerating AI investments and hiring data scientists. Uh, the challenge is that uh, you know, in spite of all these expenses which they are which they are doing, the irony is that not everybody is be able to you know benefit from AI. Uh, very few of them have uh, you know managed to take models into production, and even the ones who managed to take models into production have uh, you know fleets of data scientists maintaining and managing few models, and they take over uh, you know a month or three months to even take one model into production. So. It's so a bit of an ironic. Only six percent of the you know CXO level people will tell you that they have the right capability. When I say capability, it is not just you know uh, uh, people, but it's also people process technology. So that's where we come in. So in the last eighteen months, you know, we built this platform, which uh, using the best of the best open source tools. I call it buffet of buffet. We've taken the best of Google, best of uh, Databricks, stitched them all together and built a very simple UI for every actor or every you know uh, persona to come and you know do their part. And uh, we don't expect the data scientists to change the way they work. They can continue coding in the language of their choice. They can continue coding and using algorithm and libraries of their choice. But at the same time, we have the DevOps practices, including the uh, machine learning, uh, continuous training and continuous monitoring uh, for uh, to cater to this. So what it means is that we are able to release models quicker. Data scientists are able to experiment quicker. We are able to uh, you know take those experiments into production without uh, much of a rework and monitor and govern this uh, model in production, all this on a flexible, secure platform, which is scalable uh, because our platform is built on Kubernetes. So that's, uh, uh, you know, a Ketonic MLOps platform. I'll show you a demo of that. And at the same time, we also realize that data scientists are expensive. The way you have IT operations now, you're going to have machine learning operations uh, where every organization will have machine learning. So we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we our platform not only caters to code for data scientists but also no code for you know people who are not well well worked with code and you can move from code to no code to low code on the same platform right and what it means is that you know you have complete control of your infrastructure you are able to you know deploy models quicker more models and you are able to do more with your existing data science team uh, and more importantly you are able to reduce a lot of manual effort thereby you know having data scientists focus more on experiments and uh, not on doing mundane tasks. Let's uh, let's look at a demo now. Uh, let's look at a case of Data Bank. Uh, Data Bank is a very uh, old, uh, very reputed uh, bank which exists for over 100 years. But unfortunately, in the last uh, recent past, because of a lot of new banks, uh, you know, a lot of customers have started leaving uh, Data Bank. The head of analytics is really worried because in spite of the investments in data warehouse and uh, analytics, uh, they've not been able to figure out why the customers are uh, churning, right? And, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the the bank has made several attempts to understand, uh, you know, why the customers are leaving and they want now to use AI to uh, reduce the churn and, uh, you know, avoid the uh, number of, you know, customers exiting. Right, so let's look at, uh, you know, before we uh, jump into the demo, uh, you know, feature engineering is something which you'll hear very often in AI world. So let's understand what feature engineering means. So traditionally, uh, see for, for to predict, you know, which customer is going to leave, you need to build a model, right? And that model is building is built using AI and models are built using something called features, which are nothing but signals. In case of customer churn, the features could be, uh, you know, uh, uh, the number of times the customer sent an email and the sentiment of the email being negative, the number of times the customer made a call. And unfortunately, in, in the real world, the data is across the organization. It is not stored for AI. It is stored more for the applications like CRM uh, business applications. So data scientists have to now take this data and create these features to train a model. And this process is called uh, you know, feature engineering.
Okay, so now uh, that we understood the feature engineering, uh, let's look at how a data bank, uh, you know, the AI head will go about doing this experiment. So the first step is called experiment. It's called experiment because it's an hypothesis where the data bank assumes that using the data, they are able to predict the customer churn. So this is where they take some offline data. So in this case, the data could be from CRM, the data could be from call center analytics, from email, and then they give it to the data scientist who would then create multiple features and then experiment with various features, experiment various with various frameworks, and finally identify a model which works well, which is then shown to the business. So this part, uh, uh, you know, is very critical because this is where the data scientist is able to explore data and work with business to build a model, right? So the, okay, so let's look at how this experimentation is done uh, on the on the platform. So once you log into the platform, you see dashboard. So a data scientist typically would go to a you know. Uh, work, workspace section. There are various workspaces. So this is where the data scientist will create a new workspace. Uh, let's call it customer uh, churn. So uh, depending on uh, the, the, the data scientist, so various data scientists like to use a particular ID environment. So we support Jupyter, uh, you know, VS Code, R Studio, and then once you selected your ID environment, you can select what kind of uh, you know uh, framework do you want to use. So in this case, it could be PyTorch or PySpark and then decide how big uh, the machine should be. And once you given these details, you press a button, the, the workspace gets created. Uh, let's go to one of the workspaces which is created. So when you connect to the workspace, you essentially uh, land into a Jupyter notebook. Uh, here we have a lot of rebuilt examples. So let's take a, a case of customer churn. So when you go to customer churn, uh, you know we already have a pre-built example. So this is where the data scientist will actually build uh, you know uh, the uh, the model from the data set using various techniques or he could even go to the marketplace so we have a marketplace of over 200 pre-built use cases uh, in this case it's banking and financial he could go here and once you get into this marketplace uh, you will see uh, uh, pre-built code pre-built app and the instructions uh, which the data scientist can then follow so in the case of uh, the customer churn uh, uh, you know, when when you click here, you'll see uh, the code, the app. So let's launch the app here. So uh, you know, um, the data scientists don't have to you know really start from scratch. Uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, pre-built uh, you know uh, assets which they can use, which will accelerate their experiment. So in this case, we already have a pre-built app where you can actually once you build your uh, uh, you know uh, model, you can actually interact with your model and see what features are actually contributing to the uh, prediction. Yeah, now that the data scientist has completed the experiment, uh, the data scientist will now uh, check in this code into source uh, repository. Uh, our platform uh, syncs with Git. Uh, so all the source code across the organization or for the individual can be you know, in sync with uh, their Git. So the data scientist from here can actually move on to other experiments. So data scientist time is very valuable and we want them to focus on experimentation. And this is where the machine learning engineer comes in and the automation we offer as part of Ketonic comes in. So now uh, the machine learning engineer is able to now convert this piece of code into scalable pipeline. So pipeline is nothing but uh, a scalable uh, Docker image which runs in independently on uh, of the environment. And now the scalable pipeline is now connected with real data because the offline data which was given was more of a download. Now you need to ensure that the data which is given to the data scientist or to the model comes real time, near real time. So we have over 100 pre-built connectors. So now we would connect that to the source system and then feed that to the pipeline and rerun this pipeline with the real data to uh, you know show the business uh, uh, and once the business is happy, uh, this model is then now registered into model registry. So the way you have code uh, repository where you take versioning of code, uh, we offer model registry where the versioning of the model happens. So in case if tomorrow you get sued or if you want to recreate a particular inference for a particular point of time, you can actually go recreate, uh, reproduce, uh, you know, the model, uh, the source code, the features uh, and everything in between, right? So this uh, model is now served into production and then the uh, the consumption of this can happen through you know the apps mobile apps or you can have a batch inference and uh, deploying the model is just the first part right you need to continuously monitor the model not just for the uh, you know uh, performance of the model like how many api calls the cpu gpu consumption but also uh, you know the quality right uh, the accuracy uh, 
uh, the uh, you know bias. So we offer over 70 matrices uh, which are uh, monitored, and at any point of time, if the you know machine learning engineers feels that the model needs to be retrained, all you have to do is trigger the automated pipeline which has been created, or you can schedule the training pipeline uh, on a regular basis. So now let's look at how this whole thing happens on the platform. Yeah, now that uh, you know you understood the process, let's look at how it, uh, it is done on the platform. So once the data scientist has completed his Jupyter notebook, so this is where uh, the customer, uh, the data scientist has created the Jupyter notebook for the uh, customer churn. So here you're loading the data, profiling the data, uh, you know, training various models, and ultimately finally finding the best model. So uh, from here, the data scientist moves on. He, they, uh, you know. Uh, sync this with Git and move on. And this is where the machine learning engineer comes in. The machine learning engineer comes in and we have we provide something called Ketonic Pipeline Deployment Panel. So all you have to do is click this and uh, press compile and run. Uh, and this whole notebook is now uh, you know converted into scalable pipeline. Uh, you can see uh, the run of the pipeline here. So each step in the notebook is converted into a, a pod, an independent pod, and some of the pods can run uh, independently. So here you can see that uh, after the uh, data has been uh, processed, uh, you know, various models are being uh, trained and the best model is then uh, evaluated and put into the registry. So you can go to the model uh, uh, registry part and uh, see all the models which have been uh, registered. And uh, once you once you are happy uh, with the models which have been registered, it's time to actually deploy this model into production. Uh, in the deployment in uh, Ketonic is just one click. You are able to deploy launchers, which trigger the pipelines. If you want to run a particular pipeline and you don't want to take the pain of going into this pipeline and running it, and if you want your business to do it, uh, you can launch. You can you know deploy a launcher. You can deploy the model as an end uh, API, which the uh, you know applications can consume, or you can even deploy uh, you know uh, web applications on the platform. So let's look at how we will deploy a model. So all you have to do is go click, create deploy, go to uh, the model API, give the uh, uh, name uh, to the endpoint, select the model which has been registered. So in this case, uh, customer churn, uh, select the type of the model. It takes care of, uh, you know, the reason you have to select is we, we package it and we take care of all the monitoring and deployment, etc. And uh, you want to give the number of ports you want this to scale. And once you click deploy, the model is deployed. And you immediately get an endpoint, which now you are able to, uh, you know, share it with your developers. Now you can, you know, uh, call, uh, use mobile apps or web apps to call this uh, endpoint. And at any given point of time, if you want to do the monitoring, uh, you know, you are able to monitor the model. And like I said, the monitoring is not just from a performance perspective, but also, you know, the accuracy, the drift, and etc. So this uh, overall, uh, you know, covers the end-to-end -end, uh, life cycle of uh, the machine learning operation.